What's up, y'all? It's mail day. You know what that means. We're going to open some pa- open some packages. Open some sweet little delicious Magic the Gathering packages. We're going to see what little cards Frankie has ordered today. Well, I guess he didn't order them today. He just received them today. That's how mail works. Oh, boy, this is really... This is... Oh god, this is taped in there like a like a baby's diaper. Look at this. Oh god. Oh dear. Ugh. Oh boy, more tape. Oh god. Oh Jesus. Oh come on. It's like painter's tape, but it's like thicker. I don't even know what's happening right now. Oh boy. I'm sorry. I know this isn't. You're here for the, the the pack opening ASMR here. I know I know what you're I know what you're here for. All right, so we got four cast into the fire, a uh, a juicy little number from from Lord of the Rings set. Choose one cast into the fire deals one damage to each of up to two creatures or exile an artifact. Very versatile. This is what I would consider a strict upgrade from a card like Shatter, which is just two mana to destroy an artifact. So um. Phew. I'm kind of a stickler for st- for the term strict upgrade, and I want to make sure it's being used correctly. This might not be a strict upgrade, because it doesn't destroy the artifact. It is a different ability to exile the artifact. If your goal is to get rid of the artifact, um, and just have it no longer on the battlefield, this could be better. However, if your goal is to destroy it, because something hit it in the graveyard, maybe you, maybe you gain a life every time an artifact goes to the graveyard, or, or maybe you gain a light or maybe deals damage to the opponent every time an artifact goes to the graveyard or gets destroyed um then all of a sudden it's not a strict upgrade there are situations where it is not better that's why you usually when you talk about strict upgrades you want the exact same ability and then an improvement on that ability exile is not 100 percent an improvement what if your opponent has a card that says put a card in exile into their hand you know then it's like then it's not that it's worse it's just that it's different. So I, I am a stickler. I know mean, that might seem silly, but words are important. And then we have one one Oliphant, not to be confused with Timothy Oliphant from Justified. This guy's been seeing a ton of play in the Living Index. Oh, here's another one. And then there's this one. <laughs> also seeing play in the Living Index. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. It's a 5-7 for 6. It has reach. And then you can just forest cycle it. You're just forest and mountain cycling, getting cards in your graveyard for, you know, for your living end. Should I just leave this here? Who cares? We do what we want. We live by our own rules. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is satisfying. Look at that. My favorite my favorite way cards are set, are shipped is a plastic sleeve with this inside and then the cards in the front. That's all I want. That being said, my real favorite way of cards being shipped is Shipping Shields. Not a sponsor. But I'll take a sponsorship from Shipping Shield. I love your product. I think it's great for the environment. I think it prevents me from having to throw out top loaders, which are just plastic and shit. Uh, plastic is one of my least favorite things on the planet. I look around and it frustrates me how many things are made of plastic and we'll be, we'll be dead from it one day because it'll be on our bodies and all our oceans. And, uh, this has been an environmental message from Frank. Here's the Balrog, Durin's Bane. Seven mana for a seven five. Spell costs one less for each permanent sacrifice this turn. Very specific. He's got haste. And then he can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. So basically unblockable in a lot of situations. When he dies, destroy an artifact or creature and opponent controls. Very good. Lots of things. Lots of things. This is going in my cube sideboard, otherwise known as the maybe board. And it's an avatar demon. That's cool. And then we have four copies of Birthday Escape. Uh, I saw a deck playing four copies of this, and I used a TCG player gift card that I got for my birthday to pick these up. My birthday was about a week and a half ago. So, last weekend, we'll say. Is that correct? Yes, last weekend. And so now I got a birthday escape. This art's really, really pretty too. I don't know what this one is. Let's find out. Oh, it's 
it's a fifth cast into the fire again for the cube. So cast into the fire. Good times. We'll move this. Thank you for your order. Please feel free to contact us if you have any issues, issues, issues or questions about your purchase. Mud Skip Store. I don't have any questions really. I think this, despite my difficulty opening it, packed well. I'd rather I'd rather it be a little more difficult but be safe than have the cards like flopping around. There's also the sellers who like just put them loosely in a top loader and then tape it up and then when you get the card it's stuck. Speaking of shipping shield, beautiful. Love it. I love a shipping shield. It's just it's just cardboard. It's biodegradable. It's gonna it's gonna biodegrade. It's gonna disappear. How's that not satisfying? It's so satisfying. This 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 uh order has one of my favorite cards in the set. Oh wow. This is so funny. I this is my favorite. Uh when when oh what is what's going on there? Eh, it's not worth it's not worth causing a fit over. Okay, so we have red sleeve, side loading inner sleeve. Red sleeve and purple sleeve. I love it when they're just like, I'm going to grab whatever sleeves I have and just slop these cards in there. Well, that's fine. One of my favorite cards at the back so you guys get to see it last. Another Battle of Bywater. One of the three I ordered. Conduit of Worlds. This was a card I kind of didn't pick up right away, but it's very cool. And it's pretty much for my cube. Um, so you may play lands from your graveyard and choose a non-land permanent card in your graveyard. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that card. If you do, you can't cast additional spells. Like, that's pretty cool, right? Like, oh, I got a Primeval Titan. I'll just cast my Primeval Titan this turn. Like, if they make you discard stuff and then you just play Conduit of Worlds, like, I don't know. This card has a, this feels like a mythic. So I'm kind of surprised it's not. It's it's good, it feels good. It's a good, it's a good card. Another flowering of the white tree. Again, we went over how good this was in the last mailbag. Mailbag? It's not really a mailbag. Mail day video. Check that out. It's on the site. You'll see it. Flame of Anor. This is probably my top three favorite cards in this set. It's just such a cool card. For three mana, choose one. If you control a wizard as you cast this, you may choose two. That's unbelievable to me. All of these abilities are good enough at three mana. Target player draws two cards at instant speed, better than divination, better than a lot of four mana cards that let you draw two cards. Better than like Glimmer of Genius, better than, there's like, there's so many cards that let you draw two cards at instant speed for four mana. This does it for three. And you might get to do something else. You might get to destroy an artifact. You might get to deal five to a creature. The only way this card would be better if it said deals five damage to a creature or Planeswalker. But I think it's still very, very good. This feels like a four of in any blue red deck. And the odds of you having a wizard in a blue red deck when like a Snapcaster Mage is a wizard, pretty high. I like the idea of playing Snapcaster Mage to recast this and he fulfills the criteria of having a wizard. This card's great. Looking forward to playing it in my cube. Who do we got here? We got, this is an eBay order. So this is a card that I picked up for more than I wanted. If you guys remember my Bowmaster story, this is another card on Thursday night. I checked it out and it was $2, $2. So I was like, you know what? This is a cheap rare. It's probably not going anywhere. I'll wait. So I waited. And this was again, I figured packs were gonna get opened, collector packs, the, the, the extended art commander cards were gonna, we're going to be found. People are going to put them on the internet. That didn't happen. The next day they went up to five and I was like, oh no, five. There's still time. These are going to go down even more. Then they went up to seven. Then they went up to 10. I think they're about $20 now. Fourth Aerolingus. This card is fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite cards. Um, I, I think it's just super versatile. It's good on turn two if you have a creature. It's good on turn 10 if you don't have creatures, if you have creatures. Um, being able to just make this any amount you want 
really, really cool. Um, so I ended up picking up these. Let's see the eBay price on these guys. $6 each. So again, I felt bad at the time because I could have got them for two. But now they're 20 it still feels good, right? It's like, it's tough because you have the opportunity to get them for the best price. But you didn't get them for the, even close to the worst, really. So after eBay fees and taxes and things, it was like fourteen twenty-two. So seven dollars each. I think that's pretty good. We could probably make a. Let's make the thumbnail. Okay. Yeah. So two of these. Again, this is a card I ordered like five of because I want one for the cube, and four for constructed. So again, I think that's one of the cooler cards in the set this is from tailored tailored adventures like they're tailored to you but it's the word t-a-y-l-o-r like t-swift and then on the back there's a sticker and it's cute it says thank you for your purchase that's pretty cool i really appreciate i'm torn i really appreciate custom gestures like this i think it's very cool but on the same hand you're like oh it's gone now <laughs> it's dead so, but nevertheless, oh, look at this. Look at this. Three shipping shields. And a little a little tailored adventures thing. That's cute. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, okay. Okay. See, again, as I said the last time, I love having tokens. So when you see me get tokens, they'll be like, eight of them because they're usually like 15 to 20 cents i'm trying to get these in an order so you guys can <laughs> okay so we got pippin guard of the citadel and i absolutely love these showcase frames i think they look really really cool um a lot of times clarity and art style is an issue for me on showcase stuff but this is like it very clearly shows you it's a blue white card the art is really really good um I don't know. I, I, I think these are some of the best showcase frames that, that they've done in a while. As for this card, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Vigilance, Ward 1, and another creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice. From the card type of your choice until end of turn. I'm going to be honest. I always thought it was color. <laughs> now it's card type, and that's really good. If they have an artifact that's shooting you, you can give it protection from artifacts, you can give it protection from creatures if you don't want them to block. If they have a green creature, a red creature, and a blue creature, you just give them pro creatures. Oh my god, this card actually just got a little bit better, I think. Jesus, this card is really good. Again, a card I picked up a bunch of because it was just, they're like 50 cents, so like really no reason not to. Here's four, so I think I have one more somewhere because of because of cube. So now we got Ghost Quarter. You ever heard of Ghost Quarter? Again, this goes back to that thing where like there were so many printings um in the in the pre in the commander sets that were that were cool. And this is just another one of those for like a dollar or fifty cents or however much they they were going for. But like the art's cool and it's like a cool Lord of the Rings thing and whatever. I'll just take a play set of Ghost Quarters. Here's another Olafand. And this is <laughs> this is the coup de gras right here, right? We got these uh, eight ring tokens also you can snap this off i'm not going to i'm just going to put these in sleeves and play them like this but yeah these are cool these are like 10 cents each so i just picked up a bunch because i didn't go to any pre-releases or anything and eight ring tokens like it's it's the thing i want to have when i'm playing with the ring because you know four abilities is a lot to remember especially if you've never played with the ring you know it i've done like probably 10 drafts now and I'm still a little confused sometimes. I'm like, wait, what's the third ability? What's the fourth ability? How does it read? It's, it's a complex It's a complex mechanic. So having a reminder is, is helpful. And this is the last order. The last order here. So let's check it out. Hope it's a good one. It is a good one. It is. This is from Wasteland Gaming. This is a funny story. Sometimes when cards go up in value, I keep refreshing them. I keep the, the TCG player page open and I keep refreshing to see if anyone's like listing at a lower price. I'm giving away a, a trick right now, so hopefully you guys don't don't cut me out and steal it. Um, however, that being said, there was a I had the ring up and I was looking for copies of the ring because I was like, I think this is going to get banned. I think it's going to be banned in modern. Might be fine in legacy. I, I think legacy is powerful enough that it's probably going to be fine, but modern it seems like it's just getting shoved into everything um 
So I don't want to pick them up at like 60, 70, 80 bucks. And that's kind of where it was trending. And then I saw Wasteland Gaming posted one copy of the extended art version for $45. So that was pretty good. I, I, I just picked it up. I'm like, even if it gets banned in modern, like to have a copy for like Legacy or the Cube or a Commander deck, like 45 bucks. I'm like, that's probably about where I think it should be. And that's probably where it's going to settle if it gets banned anyway. <laughs> so... You know, and it looks amazing. Like, this is my favorite uh, version of the One Ring. I think this looks better than the Borderless version. But, I mean, it just pops. It's just such a good-looking card. So, yeah, thanks, Wasteland Gaming. Appreciate you guys honoring that price and giving me a deal. You know, not me specifically, but I found it, and you, you honored it. So that's cool. Props to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this little mailbag. Still calling it mailbag. Mail day. And, uh... I'll see you next time.